face that this world has forgotten. What is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And this time we're looking upon, of course, the fossil Pokemons that are such a stature just because their typing are so original and so well combined. They're actually, till this generation, are the only ones with, of course, the rock flying combination. And we, of course, are talking about Aerodactyl versus, of course, Archaeops. Now, Aerodactyl has for quite some time been alone, of course, in this typing combination, which is actually quite surprising, mainly because... It has a lot of things going on with it that does make it really, really viable. So it's surprising to see that it took actually four more generations before, of course, they revisited the typing combination with, of course, Archaeops. And whether, of course, if the definition, of course, this Pokemon be turned better, well, that's why we make this video. So in the end of this video, I really hope that we both can share the view of who, of course, between these two are really better. So, first and foremost, let's, of course, look at, of course, resistances and weaknesses. Now, the type of combination on its own are filled with resistances and weaknesses. There actually are so much so that I actually have to resize it because it didn't fit, of course, the bar. It has, of course, immunity to ground, resist, bug, fire, fly, normal, and poison, but also are weak to, of course, electric, ice, rock, steel, and water. There are a lot of things, of course, watch out for, and there are a lot of things these Pokemon has to adjust to. And, of course, one of the biggest issues with this Pokemon is that they actually are weak to its own type, being, of course, Rock. And, of course, weak to two possible priority moves, being, of course, or even three, of course, with Ice Shard, Bullet Punch, and, of course, Aqua Jet. The reason this is, of course, important is because both of these are rather speedier Pokemon. And are not necessarily famous for their bulk. So, of course, with that said, let's, of course, look over their stats. HP first, of course, are really close between one another, 80 versus 75, not a lot. And then, of course, we're going to look at the bulk. Uh, Aerodactyl is, by definition, bulkier, but they both have 65 on, of course, defense and 75 on, of course, Aerodactyl, where, of course, the Archaeops does maintain 65 in its special defense. So, as stated, being weak to priority and with that bulk, kind of scary, definitely will fall fast. Now... They spike at different things and definitely is a variable between these two Pokemon's viability. Um, Archaeops is of course the more offensive Pokemon between these two, while Aerodactyl has 105 in its attack, which is respectable. It's actually above average by definition alone, but Archaeops has 140. And that's a lot more. That's a plethora of a lot more. And of course we got the special attack. Um, it's very clear that Aerodactyl is not a special attack goal, well Archaeops actually can be. It's actually by definition double as strong, of course, in special attack being, of course, 60 versus 112. And that's a lot in a differential, definitely showing that Archaeops can beat both ways, while Aerodactyl is mainly focused as a horse of offensive pressure. Now, with that said, the things that set them apart is, of course, the speed here. So while Aerodactyl wasn't as hard-hitting, it is the one that will hit first, it's 130 speed, it's an incredible speed here because there are very few Pokemon that actually, of course, outspeeds it. And anything to say, of course, even Scarfer has problem, of course, of dealing with this Pokemon due to that massive speed here. But Archaeops is not necessarily slow either. 110 is a very, very fast speed here. It's actually very, very respectable, but it's no 130, that's for sure. So with that said, we're of course going to go over their abilities. And Aerodactyl does not have the most impressive uh, abilities at all. It has Pressure, Rockhead, Unnerve. Unnerve and Pressure might be very well the most moves are of course are most viable. Mainly because Rockhead only is for of course a double edge. And quite frankly, it's a move you're very, very are unlikely to use anyway. So Pressure is there. Unnerve of course will actually utilize itself against of course a possible resisting berries. It's a fair use. Uh, but definitely is very, very underwhelming, considering, of course, what this Pokemon brings to the table, of course, with its stats alone. But, in comparison to, of course, the defeatist ability from, of course, Archaeops, I'll say that's... Aerodactyl has the better ones. Defeatist is one of those abilities that you really just don't wish existed. Uh, it's very close to Emergency Exit we were talking about with a Glycopod being, of course, when you are below 50%, you will lose half of your attack and special attack. Basically, you lose any offensive pressure you had naturally. Which, of course, is mainly the reason I think Archaeops is not that viable from the first case is because there are a super, super high penalty for, of course, 
going into defeat his range, which is incredibly unfrustrating using this Pokemon with that in mind, of course. So the of course ability is what's keeping Archeops of course down. And the reason I say that is because it's such a of course extreme nerf of Archeops, the standard Pokemon. As I already said, the, the speed turn might not be the most scarier one, but the attack and special attack and having that mixed offensive, yeah, that's a thing you don't want to deal with. You really want to pressure of course Archeops to fall fast. And with of course weak to three uh, priority moves, that's very, very likely to happen, or at least put you below 50%, which of course activates or defeated. So there are factors here that make Archeops really, really hard to use, even though it's extremely viable offensively. And of course, Aerodactyl does actually lack this completely, and with of course a nerve can very well be able to deal with the offensive pressure a lot better, mainly because it doesn't lose its attack at all. Now, with of course that said, the only thing we're gonna of course make a difference between these two is of course their move pool. What do they learn? What do they share? They share a lot. They share a freaking lot. That's, I mean, these Pokemon are so similar, it's actually not even funny. So when it comes to the move pool, I really should say this before I even go further into it. Everything Aerodactyl can learn, so can Archeops. So Archeops is definitely a more broadened Pokemon, but I'm gonna mention, of course, the usual things that do share that makes these Pokemon just standalone very viable. It is, of course, a Pokemon that actually took the likes of Airlace, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Aqua Tail, and, of course, Stealth Frog, and, of course, Taunt. Aerodactyl does have a few niches going on, but, of course, it gets to learn, of course, Ice, Fire, and Thunder Fang, and, of course, it gets the likes of Agility if you want to utilize that hell. It also gets Curse, when with the speed tier 1 Curse puts your course 95 base speed, it's not a, such a bad actually exchange if you want to utilize that. Though with that said, we're of course going to talk more about of course Archeops. Because Archeops move pool is out of this world, well I should say that the other viable move that does do share but are more Towards, of course, more viable towards, of course, Archeops is, of course, a Pocket, Earth Power, Heat Wave, and Asian Power. But, you know, Special Attack on Aerodactyl, not that impressive. Special Attack on Archeops, pretty freaking scary. Now, outside of that, Archeops gets a plethora of moves that makes it super, super tough to deal with. It does get a lot of Zen Headbutt, Knock Off. Uh, also gets Enever, it gets Bounce, when I utilize that, of course. It gets Switcheroo, we get Knock Off. And we get one very, very crucial move that is, of course, U-Turn. Other than that, we have, of course, Acrobatics, which is its probably its strongest, strongest flying attack, in combination with, of course, Head Smash being a very, very necessary stone move over, of course, the likes of Stone Edge. And, of course, it should be mentioned that it's quite ironic that the defeatist Pokemon is the one that gets the massive recall move, while, of course, Aerodactyl does have the Rock Head and lacks it completely. So between these two, it's basically gonna come down to personal preferences. But here's the thing, and I'm gonna be as clear as I can. Aerodactyl is a steady Pokemon throughout its lifespan. From 100% to zero, it will not lose its offensive pressure. It will not lose any of its speeds here, which is one of the best in the game. But Aerodactyl only do a few select things really well. It is a great Sash lead with, of course, uh, rocks in mind or taunt definitely it also is a very good bandit set but Archeops is so much more yes the defeatist ability is something to be actually applying for it is an ability that will make it worse but with the new generation and C moves head smashed in all only get a 100% accurate combination it is also by now a 200 base move and with 140 in attack, it gets pretty darn scary very, very, very fast. So, in my honest opinion, and due to the mixed offenses of, of course, Archeops, it is, in my honest opinion, the winner between these two. Because Archeops can do so much more. It could offensively pivot with U-Turn. It could use Switcheroo with a band or Scarf set without any issues. Yes, 110 speed is slower than Aerodactyl. I agree with that. But 110 in speed is pretty darn fast for usual for the rest of the meta. There are very few slave Pokemon that cannot speed this Pokemon naturally anyway. And of course, a very, very big decisive point here is that none of these Pokemon has a proper flying stab. Aerodactyl has Wing Attack and Air Lays and can utilize, of course, Power Hurt with Sky Attack. And of course, Argument does the same. But Argyubs also gets Acrobatics. It does mean that if you use the set, of course, with Citrus Berries in mind to be able to, of course, recover yourself, you are now able to, of course, spam that move with a very, very high attack 
It requires 110 and plus stab on that. So Archaeops is offensively scary enough to be better than Aerodactyl. I will say this though, they serve different purposes in the meta and can of course be used differently. But in my honest opinion, due to the variety of, of course, Archaeops share alone offensive pressure, I can't say anything else than it is, in my honest opinion, the winner between these two because the variety makes this Pokemon so much more fun to use in the league format. That's a blessing in disguise. That is something that Aerodactyl simply can't pull off. Mixed offensive pressure and high speed here. Yeah, that's scary. That's really, really scary. And of course, with that said, what do you guys think? Which of these two do you think are the better? I mean, there is actually a close matchup, and as I said, it it's definitely comes down to personal preferences and which Pokemon that you actually prefer for your team. I mean, I can definitely see Aerodactyl B, and you know, as a Sash lead, Aerodactyl is, in my own opinion, better because it's speedier, and it's, it's so relevant to be a suicide lead and be able to do two things before you fall. Um, so with that said, I can see also the benefits of Aerodactyl. Uh, so with that said, thank you of course so much for watching, and uh, next week we'll of course look upon these guys.